What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Today, guys, we're talking about Liz Cambage. And Liz Cambage is a six foot eight or nine basketball player. She is mixed from Australia. And, uh, you know, guys, she has, uh, you know, some personal issues. She's uh, called out her, you know, coaches for, um, you know, having more money than the players. She sells feet pictures on OnlyFans. So she's a different type of athlete in today's world. But nonetheless, there is a situation that happened in 2021 that has been released by Brother Robert Latall over at Black Sports Online. And it comes because there was a, a, a scrimmage between the Australian team and the Nigerian basketball team in 2021. And before the game, Liz Cambridge, who was both, um, you know, half black and half white, she went and talked to the Nigerian player saying that she would rather be playing for them um, than playing for, um, you know, her home country because she is, you know, she has experienced racism. All right. Uh, but during the match, and we already know, like during the practice ex exhibition that was closed doors, Liz Cambage um, slapped one of the players on the opposing team and started telling them that they need to go back to their third world countries. She started calling them uh, primates. Uh, I believe she called them a monkey. Are you monkeys? And, you know, you know, that was, you know, you know very horrible. And after this incident happened, the game was called off the exhibition and then other players were interviewed about what happened and they confirmed that what Liz Cambridge did uh, was, was correct. And I want to kind of talk about, well, how is this possible? Because many of us are experiencing what I call bipolar racism. And I, I want to talk about this because this is not just unique to her. This can be unique to us. Okay. And I'm talking about African Americans and Africans themselves. So I'll give you two exa um, examples. 1814, around that time, uh, America had what we called the American Colonization Society. Now, these were Caucasians who uh, had witnessed what happened in Haiti. There was a slave revolution, and many slaves um, in America had skills. They were a part of our what you would consider the elite class at that time. So these people were seen as the biggest threats to help the other people uh, in the slave community rebel against Southern slave owners. So what people did in this particular society was saying, listen, you know, we need to um, send these people back to Africa. So you saw that happening not only in Liberia, but other positions around the world in England, for example, were doing similar things to Sierra Leone. So once these African Americans or people of Caribbean descent came to Africa, they were victims of being slaves themselves and they wanted to escape that oppression. But what did they do when they came to the new place? They started the same thing that was done to them in much milder forms, obviously, but they looked at themselves as better than those who lived amongst them and they dominated them in those societies. It's the same thing that you see coming from some Africans that come to America. Well, they are told that, you know, hey, these African-American people, they're a little ghetto, they are uncultured, they're unlike us. You don't deal with those people. I've heard people say that, I've heard Caribbean say it. And so they look at us and they look at us as uncultured people, some of them. They will even call you the same kind of names we call them. And the reality is, is that when other groups look at us, they look at us as the same. What do, what do I, what do I actually mean? I'm glad you asked that question. When I'm in Poland and I'm with some people here because there's no African American community really in Poland, but there is, um, an African community here and it, and it, it encompasses many different groups. You have Nigerians here, you have Zimbabweans here, you have Ethiopians here. So when we are all out, if we were to go somewhere, if there's a concert or something like that, they don't look at us as, oh, wait a minute, that black guy over there, he's from America and he may make, you know, a hundred thousand euros a year. 
So he's different than the others. No, they look at you as all being the same. And so what happens is that the oppressed becomes the oppressors. And so part of you feel like, ah, man, we belong together. While the other part feels they are not our people and we hate them. It's the duality in nature of racism amongst blacks. And I'm not going to sit here and say that sometimes I don't feel it. I haven't felt it. Okay. Or I don't think that, oh, I'm that group is different from us. It's natural. Okay. Because we've been trained to be sick as a group of blacks. And then I looked at my situation here, you know, in the last two and a half years, three years, you know, who's given me the most, um, out of everything I got in my life right now, black people. It's been working with the blacks that have helped me get to where I'm at. African-American community, the African community, the brothers in the Caribbean, brothers and sisters in South Africa. The what I have now is because of you. If I, if I had my mindset like Liz, I wouldn't have what I have. Some of the best people that I have in my life, I've met in Uganda. One of the best people that I lost in my life personally was in Uganda. Well, the, 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 the same day that's Kim to comment, the same day I arrived back to California, he passed away. I didn't see my mom in two years, passed away. But could I say, you know, what, what he did for me and, and, and what he meant to me was I have a, a close relationship with him than most people. Okay. And I want people to understand that, you know, despite our differences, try to understand your people, try to understand others. Even if they don't understand you try to, because you missing so many good people out there and you're, and, and those Nigerians didn't do anything to her. She's just using the same racist treatment that she's received on others. And do you know what is sick? Our people are messed up, bro. And I'm not even going to get into the fact that she's a woman and she's going to probably get away with this. Who cares? Right? We, we know that might going to happen, but the reality is the reason why we don't have nothing because we hate ourselves. Part of it is we want to be around each other. That's what Liz Cambridge, I wish I played for you, but I hate that you are not winning on the natural circuit of everything. You see? A lot of people want to be down with the blacks and hate them at the same time. That's why our community is so messed up. Think about, think about the, the black community. You have people here on YouTube who talk bad about black women and black men all day and they can't stop having sex with them and have babies, but they hate them and they love them at the same time. That's our dual bipolar racist attitude towards each other. And that's why we don't have anything. We need to accept where we are, accept that lot and accept the fact that we don't need to stay there that we can help each other to do more. That's what we need to do. But guys, it's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I already appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. Check out the first comment at the top. And as you know, the buffoon remains at all-time high. I'm out.